Hi, uh, I would like to, first I would like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to present our results uh, in in vitro study for using from using uh, OG electron emitting radionuclides. So first I would like to quickly go through some background for my presentation. As we all know, targeted radionuclide therapy refers to the selective targeting of cancer cells with an alpha, beta, or OG electron emitting radionuclides. In this conference, predominantly the talks were about beta, emit, beta minus emitters. But in this talk, I would like to focus on the OG electron emitters. Um, due to the short range OG electrons, those usually concentrated in the first few hundred nanometers, nanometers from the decay site. And within this uh, special zone, it could deliver a very high LET-like radiation damage. And therefore, the efficacy of OG electron emitting radionuclides usually depends on intranuclear delivery of the radionuclide. And besides the spatial distribution of this radionuclide inside a cell could be important information for micron dosimetry calculations. And therefore, in, this, in the aim of this study is to evaluate the spatial distribution of absorbed dose by indium-111 in single cells using transmission electron microscopy images. And the cell line that we use in this study is SQ20B head and neck squamous cancer cell lines. So the radionuclide that we use is uh, 11, Indian 111, and it decays by electron capture, and its half-life is 2.8 days. During the electron capture decay, an atomic hole is created, which leads to the emission of low energy OJ electrons and X-rays. There are about 7.2 OJ electrons emitted from the decay with a maximum range of about 12 micrometers. But most of the OJ electrons have extremely low energy, which is less than 5 keV. That means that their maximum penetration is less than one micron. There is also some uh, small number of conversion electron emitted and their maximum range is about 600 micrometers. So the targeting vector we use in our study is indium-111 DDPA human epidermal growth factor, which targets epidermal growth factor expressing cells such as SQ20B. And in this, this figure is collected from this uh, recent paper by Conor Leeson. And from this fluorescent figure, you can see that the EGF could be internalized, in, could be internalized into the nucleus and this shown is, is seen by four hours. And in this particular case, by 24 hours, all EGF is located inside the nucleus, cell nucleus. So this is the data that we have collected from this study. And in the study, the control used is indium chloride. In comparison, if we have uh, indium EGF, there is a in increase in significant increase in the number of internalized indium 111 uh, compared to the control at two different time points. So we do know that there is an increased radioactivity in the cells, but what we do not know is the spatial distribution of these radionuclides. So what we, if you want to know the spatial distribution, we would like to use, uh, we, we, we perform my, my micro autoradiography using TEM to study the spatial distribution of, at nanoscale. First, the cells were incubated with uh, indium 11 DTPA, HEGF. Then the cover slit was inverted onto a resin block uh, before the resin block was polymerized. Then the polymerized resin block was cut into many different 90 nanometer thick sections. And then this section were placed on TEM grid by using a wire loop. And after that, the TEM grids were placed onto a stub before an emulsion layer was applied using a wire loop method. And these TEM grids were left exposed for 10 days before they were chemically developed in preparation for imaging using TEM. So once we know, once we, can, once we get the TEM images, we want to know the dose deposition, the, the spatial distribution of the dose. First, we need to uh, calculates the, the, the radial dose distribution from a point source of one, an indium-111. So in this case, we only focus on the OJ and conversion electrons in this study. The dose point kernels uh, from a point source of indium-111 are calculated in one nanometer radial beams using Monte Carlo code Penelope. The geometry, of the, deep, the, uh, the geometry that we use in our calculation is very similar 
to the interior structure of an onion, where we place the Indian point source, Indian 111 point source at the center of the onion. And from there, we were able to uh, derive the radial low distribution from a point source of Indian 111 up to 50 microns. As I mentioned earlier, most of the OG electrons have very low energy, so <coughs> their range is only up to about 500 nanometers in this, uh, in this isotope. So here shows an example of 10 image that we have collected from this study. And from this 10 image, you can clearly see that there are some uh, Indian Y11 have internalized into the cell nucleus, but most of, and some of them are still inside the cytoplasm and also the cell membrane, which is not very visible at this scale. And it is, it is important to note that the uh, distribution of these grains that, or microautography grains is highly inhomogeneous. And this could create a highly inhomogeneous dose distribution due to the short range of OVJ electrons. From this temp image, the uh, MAR grains are highly visible, so we could count them easily. And from count, by counting them, we could uh, produce the distribution of grains inside this different, in different cell compartments uh, for cells incubated for 15 minutes and 24 hours. From this figure, from this result, we can see that uh, by 24 hours, there are more grains inside the cells than grains, the number of grains on, on the cell membrane. So other than the distribution of uh, my, uh, <coughs> MR grains, we would like to know the those distrib the dis spatial distribution of those delivered by the OG electrons. So in this case, we, for, to demonstrate that, we take a look at the smaller or zoom-in region of this TEM image. This, uh, so we, took out, we take out this uh, smaller TEM image, 10 micron by 10 micron in height and width. And in the calculation of the absorbed dose, we assume that each grain is a result of each distinctive uh, grain is a result of one indium 111 decay. And we have also voxelized this area using this geometry. And from there, we could produce a very nice 2D electron dose map uh, de delivered by indium 111 over the course of 10 days. So if you overlay the dose map that we have just calculated on the temp image that we collected from this study, we can clearly see that if the radial nuclides are outside of the cell nucleus, this is a cell nucleus, and the OJ dose from this, from iodine indium-111, is uh, unable to reach the target inside the cell nucleus. And due to the uh, low energy, the range of the low energy OG electron, it creates a halo of high intense dose region where most of the OG electrons are absorbed. And for the indium Y11, this, the radial diameter of this halo is about 800 nanometers. So in conclusion, TEM MMR is a viable method for looking at the spatial distribution of radionuclide in single cells. And TEM images collected using this method allow us to uh, perform more detailed microdosmic cal cal calculations of OG emitting radionuclides. And the heterogeneity in spatial distribution resulted in a large variation in the voxelized dose. And uh, in the case of indium Y11, the dose decreases by four orders in magnitude within a radial distance of 400 nanometers. So this study shows that for the OJ emitting radionuclides, they, are, they need to be incorporated close to the targets to be effective if you want to use the OJ dose. However, if they are close to the target, then these radionuclides could produce complex DSP, which are difficult to repair. So uh, that's all from me for today. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all my colleagues from University of Oxford and the Australian National University, in particularly the uh, principal investigator, Dr. Nadia Fauzoni from University of and Oxford, as well as our funding agencies from uh, the UK and Australia. Thank you very much.